when I previewed the Vivo V9, I thought it was quite promising with its top-notch screen and design, but held my verdict back to see how the camera and the phone performs as we put it through its paces. Well, we have been putting it through its paces and sadly, things didn't turn out as well as Vivo would have hoped for. Alright, let me explain. Coming up next on TechTV.com. Hey guys, this is Shubram from TechPP and today we will be reviewing the Vivo V9 and also trying out a new 5 minute format which will include all the things you would need to know about the Vivo V9 such as the pros and cons, FAQs, competition and of course the verdict. But before we do that, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified as soon as we post a new video. So with that, let the counter begin. First, let's talk about the good stuff. The Vivo V9 is a handsome phone, despite its plastic shell. There's a shiny layer on the pack which attracts both eyes and fingerprints. It also gets really greasy and disgusting, so don't forget to use the bundled case. The 6.3 inch Full HD Plus screen is also well done. It's sharp, vibrant and bright enough to be visible outdoors. The V9's biggest highlight, apart from the screen, is a 24 megapixel selfie camera. And it does not disappoint. It is capable of capturing detailed, very good pictures in most lighting conditions. The rear 16 megapixel and 5 megapixel combo impresses as well. But as soon as the lights go down, the camera does begin to struggle with focus and produces grainy shots more often than not. Now, the bad stuff. The Vivo V9 is not the snappiest phone out there. Even everyday tasks like browsing the web or launching apps or even publishing a story on Instagram tend to lag and stutter. The battery life is also just average. On moderate use, it will only last you less than a day. Another critical letdown is the software. Calling that skin inspired by iOS would be an understatement, I feel. That's primarily because it doesn't just look like iOS, it even works like one. So for instance, True Color Live Color ID didn't work for me. The notification shade takes up the entire screen and more. There are also other things like you cannot control your music from the lost screen. It's just not a pleasant experience. So with that done, let's jump into some specific questions you might have. So starting with the most obvious one, does it have a micro SD card slot? Uh, yeah, it does and it's a dedicated one, not a hybrid. So that's nice. How handy it is considering the 6.3 inch display. It's surprisingly handy, which is mainly due to the curved rear and it actually does not feel like a 6.3 inch display. Is there a Gorilla Glass layer? Nothing they claim or advertise, but yeah, so we really doubt that. But we are also waiting for official confirmation on that. Does the plastic feel cheap? For the most part, it does not. But if you tap the rear, you can sort of make out it's plastic. How quickly can it be charged? There's no quick charging on the V9. So it takes nearly two and a half hours to juice up completely. Does it support LTE plus? Uh, no, it does not support LTE plus. How about voice over LTE? So it does support voice over LTE, but only on the same one. How's the speaker? The speaker is really good and loud, but the quality gets really bad at higher volume levels. How well do these AI camera features work? So if by AI camera features, you mean the beautify features, it looks very artificial and personally, I would not recommend it. The stickers work really well though, if you are into that kind of stuff. Does it have a LED for notifications? Yeah, it does have an LED right in the side this notch. Is the notch annoying? I don't mind the notch, but it does create some problems. Because of that weird 19 is to 9 aspect ratio, you get these black and white bars on the top and bottom while watching videos or using any unsupported app. How much free RAM do you usually get? I usually get 1.1 GB of free RAM. How's the gaming performance? As I said, the performance is not V9's strongest suit. Therefore, if you're planning to play any resource intensive games like the new PUBG, I would not recommend it. Are there any heating issues? No, not really. It does get a little warm if you play games, so, but that's normal. What's the benchmark score? The Vivo V9 managed to generate an N22 score of 89929, but let's not get into benchmarks right now. How's the call quality? Calls on the V9 sound fine, but I have heard better. How quick is the face unlock feature? The face unlock feature works quickly enough, but the lack of any special sensors means anyone can pick up the phone, point at your face no matter what you're doing and unlock it. So convenient, yes, but secure, not at all. How much does battery consume for 10 minutes 720p YouTube video? 
For a 720p YouTube video, you will lose roughly 4 to 5% of battery. I hope it's clear why I earlier said that the V9 fails to strike that X factor the company was hoping it would. That being said, the two features Vivo is primarily boasting about the screen and the selfie camera do work as advertised, but the rest unfortunately falls short, especially the performance and software. At Rs. 2299, I certainly cannot recommend the Vivo V9 to most, but if you are someone who strictly prioritizes selfies and a unique design, you can consider it. The Oppo F7 is probably its closest competitor in terms of features and price, but I haven't managed to use it enough to comment. Although I would suggest taking a look at Motorola's Moto X4 or even the Xiaomi Redmi 5 Pro, both of which are a significantly more well-balanced phone. So that was it for this video guys. Don't forget to subscribe and until the next time, may the tech be with you.